Welcome friends, in this video, let's discuss about greenhouse effect. Before discussing greenhouse effect, let's look at the greenhouse and the science behind the utilization of greenhouse. So this, these are the structures which are used uh, in the temperate countries of the world, that is the cooler climatic conditions of the world to grow the plants. So since in the temperate countries, in the temperate climate, that there is a cooler climate throughout the year. So this climate is not congenial, it's not favorable for the growth of the plants. So these structures, that is, these greenhouses are utilized in these countries to provide favorable climatic condition for the growth of the plants to escape from the harsh cold climatic condition from outside. So the process happening in the greenhouse is it absorbs the sun's energy. Okay, sun emits energy. So this greenhouse absorbs the uh, solar radiation and some of the energy after absorption within the greenhouse is reflected back to the atmosphere and major part of the energy is conserved within the greenhouse itself and this energy warms the inner climatic conditions that is the microclimate of the greenhouse and provide congenial con condition that is the little bit warmer condition for the growth of the plants within the greenhouse. So if you compare the temperature range within the greenhouse and outside the greenhouse, so here the outside is much colder when compared to the climate within the greenhouse. So this is the greenhouse effect. So this effect is happening on a larger scale in our planet earth okay let's look at the greenhouse effect on a larger scale that is happening in our planet okay this greenhouse effect let's look at the definition greenhouse effect is a naturally occurring phenomenon that blankets the earth's lower atmosphere and warms it okay it's a naturally occurring phenomenon that blankets the lower atmosphere of the earth and it keeps the earth warm maintaining the maintaining the temperature suitable for living things to survive so this is the phenomenon here so here, if a planet's atmosphere contains greenhouse gases, uh, our earth surely contains these greenhouse gases, the atmosphere radiates energy in all directions. So these greenhouse gases absorb the earth's energy and radiates this in all the directions and it provides favorable condition for the growth of the living beings within the planet earth by providing warmer climatic conditions. Okay, So this is the greenhouse effect. In the absence of naturally occurring greenhouse effect, if there is no, there are no greenhouse gases to absorb uh, some of the heat that is radiated, radiated from the earth, then the average temperature of the earth's surface would be minus 18 degrees Celsius. So, so imagine uh, the earth at minus 18 degrees Celsius, there would be no life on the earth if there, there were no greenhouse gases. So at present, the average temperature is 15 degrees Celsius because of the presence of greenhouse gases. So this is the very important phenomenon here. So let's look at the mechanism of greenhouse effect on the Earth's atmosphere. So here, Earth receives incoming energy from the Sun. Sun emits solar radiation. So Sun's energy is tra transmitted to the Earth. Since Sun is very hot, okay, energy is transmitted to the Earth in the form of high energy short wavelengths. So we know that shorter the wavelength there is more energy okay since sun is very hot and it emits higher energy of shorter wavelengths so this penetrates the earth atmosphere so this is reaching the earth okay the sun remember here sun emits shorter wavelength high energy radiation okay and here in the earth 30 percent of the sun's energy is reflected directly back to the space by the atmosphere, clouds and surface of the earth. Okay, And remaining 65 to 70 percent of the sun's energy will be absorbed by the earth. Okay, This will be absorbed by the earth. So after absorption, earth re-emits energy back to the atmosphere. Okay, Earth re-emits the energy back to the atmosphere. Here, let there is a little bit change here. Because earth's surface is cooler than that of the sun, so earth carries less energy than that of the sun, the emitted energy is in the form of long wavelength, infrared radiation. So energy is less when compared to the short wavelength. So earth emits energy in the form of long wavelength infrared radiation. Okay. So this long wavelength infrared radiation are absorbed by these greenhouse gases. So these are absorbed by the greenhouse gases. Some of these are absorbed, some of these are reflected back to the atmosphere. So this absorbed greenhouse gases again re-emits the absorbed energy and they disperse the energy throughout the atmosphere okay keeping earth warmer and creating con congenial condition for the growth of the plants i will explain this with the help of this 
figure it will clear your doors here the natural greenhouse effect as i mentioned earlier sun is very hot emitting long wavelength sorry short wavelength higher energy so solar en energy is emitted and some of these are reflected back to the atmosphere and some of these are absorbed by the earth okay after absorption earth again re-emits energy okay and this this in, in this process earth emits long wavelength radiation because earth is cooler than the sun it the energy will be less so earth emits long wavelength infrared radiation so here this greenhouse gases is acting as a blanket on the lower atmosphere okay these greenhouse gases carbon dioxide nitrous oxide and methane okay this blocks some of the infrared radiation that is emitted by the earth okay and some of these are escaped into the atmosphere some of these are blocked and absorbed okay and this absorbed energy is again re-emitted and dispersed throughout the atmosphere and creating warmer climatic conditions that is su suitable for the uh, growth of the living beings but after human interference uh, after 1850s and industrial revolution there is more emission of carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and these greenhouse gases so look at the thickness of the uh, blanket greenhouse gases here look at the thickness this is very sh short very very thin here here look at the thickness after the industrial revolution it is very thick okay the blanket is very thick so what happens here is that the sun emits solar radiation so it is absorbed by the earth and again re-emitted in the form of infrared radiation previously some of the most of the heat is escaped into the outer atmosphere so some of it are absorbed by the greenhouse gases here since the blanket is very thick the most of the radiated energy from the earth is absorbed by these greenhouse gases so more energy is absorbed so more rise in temperature thereby there is a global warming warming happening so this is the interference of human beings in the climate okay this is an anomaly to the carbon cycle when i discussed uh, the biogeochemical cycle if we disturb the natural equil equilibrium of these biogeochemicals there are deleterious effect that is happening that may destabilize the whole uh, system itself so this is interference by the human beings into the carbon cycle so this is destabilizing the earth system by creating global warming so this is the thing here so by the percentage contribution to the greenhouse effect on the earth the four major gases are so the percentage contribution to the warming of the earth these are the four important uh, greenhouse gases water vapor which is which is uh, responsible for the the greenhouse uh, responsible for warming the earth from 36 to 70 percent okay and carbon dioxide 9 to 26 percent methane 4 to 9 percent ozone 3 to 7 percent so altogether 36 to 70 percent of the warming of the earth is car uh, is, is caused by the water vapor but this is not a serious issue because water vapor is part of the water cycle so whatever the water vapor which is present in the atmosphere is again cycled in the form of rainfall and again, again it is evaporated and this is recycling there is a short term phenomenon water vapor may last for uh, three to seven days in the atmosphere okay this is not the major threat to the global warming the major threat to global warming is the carbon dioxide and other gases like methane nitrous oxide because carbon dioxide has the lifespan of 100 to 150 years so this water vapor has only three to seven days this carbon dioxide has 100 to 150 years here whatever the carbon dioxide that is emitted suppose uh, you emit one tons of one ton of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere this one ton will remain for the next 100 to 150 years in the atmosphere so this is creating perpetual warming of the earth okay and in the process we are emitting more and more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere this is accumulating in the atmosphere itself causing the global warming so this is the thing longevity of the carbon dioxide is the major threat uh, to the global warming so methane similarly methane is also contributing four to nine percent so as and when the concentration of the carbon dioxide increases there is more global warming happening because of the because of the lifespan of the carbon dioxide okay so this is the thing about uh, greenhouse effect so in the next uh, video let's look at the global warming okay uh, so thanks for watching please like the video share this it on facebook so that it can reach more people please help me in bringing more traffic into the channel so that uh, it may be an ins inspiration for me to do more videos
if you watch more okay and please subscribe to the channel thank you thanks for watching